facers for the impatient. Let's begin with imaginary numbers. For ages, people have been saying that every time you square any number, you get a positive one. It was so much so that when someone said, what if we have a number whose square is negative? Let's say J, whose square is minus 1. People mocked him, they made fun of him, and they said, you are imagining things. That J is an imaginary number. Hmm. And he insisted, what if J square is negative, J square is minus 1? And they said, a figment of your imagination. J is imaginary. Imaginary or a prejudice? Let's see. If we say that J is imaginary because when we square it we get negative 1, a negative number, let's try J3. We square J3 and we get J3 squared is J squared times 3 squared and that is of course negative 1 times 9, that is negative 9. So J3 squared gives you a negative number. By prejudice, we say J3 is also imaginary. Let's try another one, negative J3. Well, let's square that. Square of negative J3. That would be J squared times the square of negative 3, like this. That is, of course, minus 1 times positive 9. That is negative 9. Ergo, negative J3 is also an imaginary number according to this convention. By juxtaposition, of course, the old numbers became known as the real numbers, of course, real numbers. Soon, another more general type of number appeared. A number like this one, with a real part and an imaginary part. And they call that name a complex number. What you see on your screen, 3 plus J4, is not a complex number. No, it isn't. It is the representation of a complex number. The what? Yes, the representation. Let's talk a little bit about representation and the difference with the objects they represent. We use representations daily. For instance, for a cop, that may represent a subject. But that is not the subject. It's only a representation. And for someone working in an office of the government, that little number there represents a person. But that is not a person. And for some other people, a researcher, that may represent a person. But again, it is not a person. And then that picture represents a person. But that is not a person. It's only a picture. It's only a representation of a person. Well, for numbers, we have the same relationship between representation and entity. On one side, nobody has ever seen a number three. No. We have seen three bananas, three oranges, three pineapples, three dogs. But the number three, the actual abstract number three, no. Nobody has seen it. So instead, we humans utilize representations for those numbers. Let's have a look. For instance, at number 3. In ancient Rome, number 3 was represented like so. In ancient China, the same number 3 was represented this way. And Hindi Arabic mathematicians used to represent the same number this way which is, by the way, the representation many of us use today. But neither of those is the number three. Those are only representations of the abstract concept three. It is the same with complex numbers, representations. There is a difference. In common use on the world right now, we use only one representation for the concept three. In complex numbers, we use simultaneously more than one representation for the same complex number, and we live to tell the story, representing a complex number. 
Well, let's begin with this number 3 plus j4 we saw already. That is the binomial representation with a real part and an imaginary part. Of course, it's not the only way of representing that number. Someone said, let's represent that number on a plane. And we had rectangular or Cartesian representation. But now this kind of plane, a complex plane with a real axis, which is the one we're used to, to represent real numbers, and an imaginary axis. So we're going to represent every complex number by a point on that complex plane. Absolutely, that is a graphical representation of that. Another one is represent a complex number by the two coordinates of that point, as in this case, 3, 4. That is a rectangular or Cartesian representation of the same number we saw before in binomial 3 plus j4. Another representation yet is a polar one in which we represent the same number with a vector from the origin of the complex plane to that point and represent that by its length, absolute value 5, and its argument, the angle between the vector and the real axis, 53.1 degrees. And that is a polar representation of the same number. Neither of those three is the complex number we're talking about. All of those are valid representations of the same number. Same number. Well, once numbers are defined and represented, of course, we can run operations on them, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, sines, cosines, exponential, square roots, logarithms, you name it. But I'm leaving that to you and to your calculators. 